What's going on everyone? I hope you all had a great week in the market. I certainly did. Uh, nice vicious rally back. Uh, this week I'm actually not going to take requests from you all because I'm working on a big write-up for my Substack for tomorrow for an earnings preview, how to navigate it day by day because you've got all this stuff on different days. I mean, you've got Google on Tuesday. I think that's going to be a pretty bad one and I'm going to go over why here. And so I, it, it, there's a lot to navigate next week and I, I need to work on that write-up for tomorrow. So um, no requests this week. But um, right now I want to go over this past week in my Substack first and I want to go over what I said and how it all played out. Um, last weekend, okay, I started by going over this chart saying we were going to have a big squeeze, right? I posted this chart here and I said we are at record short positioning and we were ripe for a squeeze and that's exactly what happened this week. We had this massive squeeze. You had three, four days of the NASDAQ just ripping straight up pretty much exactly like I, I pointed out. And um, I went down and I put my best idea for the week was a put spread on Starbucks. And Starbucks was a chart I really liked. You know, it was over all the moving averages. And this trade returned 13% in one week. It was 13.6%. Um, and it was just simply selling a 76, 75 put spread. And Starbucks ripped all week. I mean, it closed the week at like $82, $83. And this was never in risk. And my second best trade was Walmart. And this was another one where it was it was looking good and it ended up up here. And I've posted 10 of these right now, trades of the week, and nine of them have worked out. And, uh, I, you know, you're missing a lot if you're not my sub stack. I'm, I'm, you know, a lot of you have said, you know, it's too expensive. I, how, much, how cheap do you want it to be? I'm, I'm making you money every single day. I mean, all these other like fake gurus are charging $200 a month on Twitter and they're not doing anything for you. And so... Um, I wanted to go over all the puts I've noted this week, okay? So, um, you know, I noted the huge 240 calls on the SMH. This was Monday, okay? And then uh, that ripped. And then we had this ENVX. If you look it up, there was incredible options activity in the name. It ripped completely. This is uh, a lot of these names. What you'll notice is I, what I put here was big tech saw a lot of bearish positioning, especially Google. Um, I noted all the call sales and put buys. So if you go up here, you can see, look, somebody sold heavy Google calls at 115 and 125, bearish positioning, okay? And you go to put buys, October 115, September 20, 23, 99. There was a lot of bearish action on Google. And um, what you can see here, and Amazon, on the other hand, there was put sales, so they were looking bullish for it, and then call buys, and so, Amazon, if you notice this week, was pretty strong and Google was actually pretty weak. So I saw that in the options activity and I noted that for everyone out there. And so that was something. And then the next day after that, I kept noting there was more and more Google puts and Microsoft puts. And, and those names were really, really weak this week. And so um, it was it was interesting to see and look right here. I noted look at the American Express 150 calls for this week, right? American Express had killer earnings. There was a huge unusual call buy on that, right? And I noted Disney weekly call buys playing off Netflix. Disney went from like 97 to 103. So all these unusual calls that I noted, they just kept going higher and higher and higher. Um, this is one I've been paying attention to recently, uh, NLOK, it's uh, I think Norton LifeLock. It had a $60 million insider buy last month at 22 and look, they kept buying August 24 calls. They were selling puts this week and guess what the stock did? It kept going and going and going. I think it closed the week over 25. And so, you know, I, I put this post over the last month. The market's flat, look, you can see here, right? It, it's flat over the last month and I actually returned 13%. So, you know, what I do selling put spreads, selling call spreads, trading around week to week, that's that's how you outperform when the market does nothing. You know, all these people on Twitter just sit there and they, they buy and hold and that that's just, that works when the market's going up every single day. What do you do when the market doesn't go up every single day? And that's what I do. You know, I manage volatility and uh, I utilize options in a way to just conservatively make one to 2% a week. And so, 
You look back at yesterday's recap and I noted again, more Google puts, August 110. You can see them right here and they sold calls, August 116 on Google. They bought Google August 110 puts. You know, I noted uh, more odd calls and something like Splunk. This thing, look, they bought August 135 calls and Splunk. This is a $105 stock. Why, why are they buying these 2,500 of them? I don't know, is somebody gonna announce a buyout? I don't know. Uh, it could be a hedge. It could be somebody that's short and it could be a hedge. Who knows? But you know what? You follow this unusual activity in your own manner. You know, you wanna sell puts, you wanna do whatever you do, but take note of it all. Take note of it all. So with that said, let's get to the chart session for the week. So um, let's start with Amazon. Obviously, you know, I, most of you follow me for Amazon. So looking back at Amazon, right? We have right here at 102-ish, those are the 2018 highs. What you'll see here with Amazon is we recently broke this downtrend on the weekly, right? We retested it, right? And we closed higher. Amazon's a strong looking chart. Look, the MACD flipped over. Everything's good. I'm actually expecting a pretty neutral earnings from Amazon. You know, they have a lot to say about uh, fuel prices and costs and um, how they manage it, I hope. Uh, Amazon puts in a good print. I'm I'm not bearish on it. I'm not. I, I don't think it's going to zoom, you know, 10% higher or anything. There's nothing they can really do. The last quarter, oil was pretty terrible, but um, I, I still love Amazon. I think long term it's still the best company in our markets, but I would say I am neutral on Amazon. But this is a very, very nice chart. This is a very nice chart. You know, I I really don't like to play earnings directly. You know, if you want to sell put spreads down here to get long Amazon at support, you know, at 102, 103, something like that. You can see here it had one, two, three, four, five. I mean, it had multiple bounces at that level. I wouldn't expect it to break this level. So, um, if you want to sell put spreads there, be my guest. But I still do like my Amazon. Now, let's go next to Google. So Google reports first, okay? It's Tuesday. And what concerns me with Google is if you follow me on Twitter, you'll know I said Google broke down, okay? And it did. It officially broke down yesterday. Let's pull this up here. So this has been this uptrend Google's been in. And it's it's really, it's a bear flag. You know, I said that it's, it's, it's a bear flag, but yesterday it finally broke down and it closed it. Now, we all know Google's fundamentally cheap. We all know Google's a great company, but when you have a technical breakdown like this, it's, it's a major worry. Could Google reverse it next week? I mean, it could, but it's, I would say highly unlikely. So what concerns me this coming week is Google reports first. So even if I say, okay, I like Meta this week, and I do, I like Meta. If I had to say of all the fangs, I would say Meta probably has the best setup into earnings besides Amazon, okay? But, um, but if, if Google reports poor numbers, it's, it's gonna smack Meta first, right? Just like Snapchat did yesterday. Yesterday, Meta was down almost 8% because of Snapchat. So with that said, Google's first. If you're along this name, I would recommend selling covered calls. I mean that truly, I mean that because look, you, I, would, I would recommend selling calls even right here at like 115 because that, that's over all these moving averages. And honestly, this is gonna be stiff resistance going back up. So it, it's gonna take a miracle of an ER, an unbelievable report to get through it. But again, guys, charts are just how funds are positioning, right? funds are, are exiting the name. You know, this was the first week after the split, a lot like Amazon, it just tanked. It tanked the first week after the split. And so funds used it as an opportunity to dump on retail. And in that process, they just, they they broke the chart. And so I, I don't see anything positive here for, for Google, but yeah, obviously long-term, this is a tremendous company. Uh, where could it go in the short term? I, I don't know, probably back down here to this 102 level, retest the lows. And uh, we'll start from there. I actually bought puts yesterday at 108 for $3.30. Will it work? I don't know. I, I, I don't buy puts often. Uh, this was just something where, you know, you, you see this enough times where a chart breaks and you say, okay, I'm doing it, right? You know, I, look, look back at the past couple months, Apple, oil, every time I noted a chart broke, what happened? It extended the decline. So 
just keep that in mind, and uh, we'll see what happens this week with all these names. You know, earnings is such a crapshoot. I, I don't like to play earnings uh, directly. I, I sell puts, whatever, but very rarely will I play earnings directly. But I am going to do it this week on Meta, and I'll show you why in, in a second. So next is Apple. So with Apple, what you'll note here is look at this big uptrend I had, right? And when we go back to it, uh, you'll remember I made my video here about Apple being a sell and it just kept going down because it broke that uptrend, much like Google's doing now. But look, if we zoom in, check this out. Apple just reclaimed that uptrend. It just reclaimed it. And then look what happened yesterday. It closed right below it. Look at that. What? It closed right, right, right below it. But Apple is over all the moving averages. It's probably the strongest name in the market right now. Now, what do I think of Apple's earnings? You know, Apple, they're, they're Apple, right? Like, no matter how bad the earnings are, they've got this massive, like, $90 billion buyback, and they're always buying back stock. You know, Warren Buffett is in there, and so nobody really ever sells Apple. But, but if Apple at all warns, Apple's the biggest company in our markets, and so this thing could rock the markets. And this little close here, right below here, this is tricky. This is really tricky because you could argue, you could argue Apple, look, check this out. You could argue right here. If I draw a line from here all the way through, right? You could argue Apple's in this uh, rising, uh, this rising bear flag, right? You could argue it's in here and look, it's never closed below it, right? Every time it dips below it, it comes up. This is this is bearish, and if this breaks, Apple's gonna come back down here to this 130 level. So Apple's one I would also sell covered calls on. I, I really don't see um, I, I don't see it breaking up here. Look at this. This is 159.60. Uh, I don't see it getting back up there. So um, sorry, those are our dogs in the background. They're they're barking at something uh, in the living room. Um, so 159.60. Above it, you could probably sell call spreads if you want to be risky, but I, I'd rather just not play most of these and just let earnings week play out. Uh, next, we're going to look at Microsoft. And now Microsoft, you know, same thing. It's been in the same channel all year. It's done nothing. You can see the RSI is weak. This is just a really, really weak name. And um, until it just gets out over this 280 or breaks down under here, it, it's just kind of in no man's land. So... Microsoft, I'm also neutral on this week. Uh, like Amazon, I would say neutral. And Apple, I'm actually bearish on with Google. We'll see how those two play out. And uh, Facebook is the one that I like, actually, believe it or not, into this week. So when you go down to Facebook, pull this up here. You see we've been in this uh, falling wedge, basically, since earnings, right? And we broke out this week. And then obviously Snapchat killed it all, right? So going in, the sentiment's terrible because of Snapchat, and that's why I like it. I actually, I have 2,500 shares right now. I sold puts yesterday at 170. Um, I should have the shares in my account. I really haven't even checked this morning. But what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna sell 170 calls against the shares I got at like 169.35. So those pay almost 10 bucks. Um, I don't really care what happens. If, if Facebook dips, I'll be in at basically like 159. I'm fine with that too. Fundamentally, that's a very cheap price. Uh, but I like it because there's so much bearish sentiment around advertising because because of um, Snapchat. So Meta is the only one that I will play next week. Google, I will not because the chart is broken. Meta, this is the complete opposite. The chart is not broken. And so this one is playable to me. And uh, I, I like it. I like it going in here. Expectations are horribly low because of Snapchat. But I'll tell you something. Those Snapchat ad dollars, they went somewhere. They went TikTok. They went Meta. They went Amazon. They, they went somewhere else. Okay, Snapchat, just that's just a terrible company. Nobody really cares about that. Um, so next, let's look at Tesla. Tesla had their earnings this week. And... You know, to be honest with you, I know everyone's all excited about their earnings, but what I see, what I see 
is I see one shoulder here, I see a head here, and I feel like a second shoulder is gonna form up here at 900, and you're gonna set up this bearish head and shoulders and lower. I mean, you know, uh, their earnings were okay. I mean, obviously everyone expected them to do well with the price of fuel up. Um, people were buying electric cars. I mean, they just, they were. Um, their margins were down. I, I just, I didn't really see anything in that report that said, wow, this is spectacular and this company should be 20x plus sales. I mean, again, this is a company that's tied to Elon Musk. This thing is tied to Elon Musk. And um, when you step back and you look at the price to sales ratios of other car makers to Tesla, if anything happens to Musk, th this thing is worth significantly less. More than that, if you read the Twitter filings, uh, I feel that they're going to force Elon to buy Twitter. The Delaware courts are. You know, if they're going to maintain their credibility, they're going to force Elon to buy Twitter, and he's going to have to sell more and more Tesla to do that. And every time he sold Tesla, it's rocked this thing. Every single time. Like, he sold it up here, it rocked it, he sold some more. And he might have to sell, you know, another 10% of his Tesla holdings to purchase Twitter, and... With how much of a train wreck Twitter's earnings were yesterday, Elon's going to have to spend a lot of time dedicated to Twitter, and it's going to take him away from Tesla. And so, you know, going forward, I, I don't know how involved Elon can be at tw Twitter and Tesla at the same time. So, uh, you know, this isn't my favorite chart. It's really, like, again, it's really, uh, it still hasn't even reclaimed the 200 yet. So... Tesla's got a long way to go technically before it's it's a nice chart. Let's let's look at it on the weekly. You know, on the weekly, uh, it's still below some key key levels, but um, we'll see. You know, it's got a nice bearish divergence here. You, you can play it. You know, uh, it's probably going to go up to like nine hundred dollars first. Like I said, it's gonna. I think I think it's gonna form a second shoulder. So let's see what happens at nine hundred. Um, next, we're gonna look at Nvidia. Nancy Pelosi's favorite name. So, you know, it makes me laugh. I, I, I was talking with some guy yesterday on Twitter and he, he was, you know, arguing that, you know, Pelosi didn't know about the chips bill or whatever. My thing is, why aren't these politicians indexing, right? Like, why are they buying specific names? Like, if, if Nancy Pelosi thought tech is going up, why not just buy the QQQ? Why did she specifically buy NVIDIA? And for me, it's, it's pretty easy because... NVIDIA isn't a direct beneficiary of the chips bill, but being that it is a semi, it was going to have a big run because of the chips bill. You know, like if Nancy bought Intel or, you know, something that directly benefited, then people would have screamed, how did she do it, right? Because she did that before with Tesla and the EV bill and other stuff. This way, Pelosi can say, well... Um, NVIDIA isn't a direct beneficiary of it. And that's true. And that's true. And it was brilliantly played. I mean, she's had it for, what, like six sessions? And it went from, what, like 150 all the way up to 173 now. It was as high as 180. So, you know, well done by her. But I, I think politicians should only be allowed to index. I don't think they should be out there picking stocks. That's just, that, that's a messy thing. So with this, it finally reclaimed 10 on the weekly. You can see this bullish divergence here. You know, I've always said um, NVIDIA is one of my favorites after Amazon and Google. Pro Actually, it probably is my third favorite. Um, it's come down a lot. It's still pretty pricey. You know, Bitcoin's weighing on them. Gaming's weighing on them. But I do like it long term. Short term, it's, it's, it's a mess. But it's over all the moving averages. You can see a strong MACD. But, you know, all these names, I just... Earnings is such a crapshoot. You never know what Wall Street's looking for, and I don't. I haven't, I haven't seen any like notable option flow on it to uh, gauge a direction. So, with Nvidia, you know, you want to sell puts lower. Be my guest. Look down here at 140, the 52 week lows. Sell puts down there. Sell put spreads. Uh, if you can get long at 52 week lows, you're you're not gonna get hurt in the long run. Uh, next, we have AMD. So AMD. Same setup like NVIDIA. Uh, it's run really hard. I mean, look at this thing. It was 71, not even 10 sessions ago. So this thing's run super hard. It's over all the moving averages. And uh, on the weekly, look at that. It finally reclaimed the 10. And uh, look, I like this name. I, I like all of them. But look, I like to sell put spreads at the 200. So for me, 
if he can get long at the 200, be my guest, okay? So, um, you know, I, I would sell, even if it's two weeks out, three weeks out, I, I would sell put spreads down here at 72 bucks and, and try to get long down here. That That's the level you, everyone wants to get long every stock at the 200 week. So that's my thought on AMD. Um, Netflix. Now, these guys had their earnings this week, and it was funny to me because you, you listen to people, Netflix had a good earnings. Uh, well, they still lost 950,000 subs. You know, I know it's better than the 2 million they projected, but I, I wouldn't really say it was a great earnings. It was, um, it was so-so earnings. Look, Netflix, uh, I've made my case clear on this thing. I think they're going to have a long road ahead of them. You, you know, you're going to have to spend on content forever versus Disney, Apple, Amazon, and you're never going to have the free cash flow to issue a dividend you're never going to uh become that compounder that people want and so i think that's the realization that people had when they dumped it once and then again so yeah i think netflix is a good company i don't i don't think it's a terrible company but i also think it's gonna kind of just be in no man's land forever like you're never going to compete like look what's, what's gonna happen this september when amazon launches their billion dollar uh lord of the rings show right that's gonna pull so many hours from Netflix and then going forward it's like what's going to happen every single time Apple or Amazon launches one of these huge shows so um, especially with Netflix going to that ad tier which is going to be based on getting money as uh, people consume content well all these other ones are consuming are, are creating better and better content so it's going to be an issue going forward for Netflix and um, they are no longer let's say the de facto monopoly of the streaming space. There's just so much competition out there for people's eyeballs. And frankly speaking, I mean, at our household, we don't even watch Netflix anymore. We're just so bored of all the content, right? We're just trying different apps, whether it's Peacock for a month or Paramount or whatever. We're just trying different apps just to, you know, get new content out there. And I imagine other households are the same. So um, going forward, yeah, this name's probably bottomed here. It's, it's a good put sale candidate. You know, you want to sell put spreads lower? Yeah. I mean, it's not a short, I don't think, uh, at 220. It's not like egregiously overvalued. It's just not something I see long term uh, going back to 700. Like this, this is probably never going to be seen again. Uh, next, we have Visa. And I, I've liked this name for a while, and I've told you guys because it's near the 200 week. And look at that, three straight weeks up. This is a really beautiful chart. And we saw yesterday from American Express, tremendous numbers. The Amex CEO said, where's the recession? I mean, nobody's slowing spending, whatever. I'm not going to say that directly because Amex is higher end customers. Uh, those are wealthier people than uh, the Visa and MasterCard users. So, um, yes, it was a big thing for Visa. I, I still would sell puts here, 196, 197. I I like Visa a lot. I think this is a great company. It's been basing for a really long time. It's probably going to go back up here to this 250 highs. This is a really great thing, but but Visa is not Amex. So, um, you know, Amex is the king of corporate cards. You know, it's the king of travel. I mean, it, it's just so many things that um, you, you can't compare the two, but the Amex report was really, really good. It said, you know, where's the recession? So I like this Visa chart a lot. Um, next we have Exxon. So when we look at Exxon, uh, look at it. Another week, it got pinned under here. Oil is weak. Oil is really, really weak right now, okay? Um, I still favor Exxon at 75 in August. I, I sold put spreads down here. That's the level I'm looking to get long at. Uh, you can see the negative MACD. I, I'm just not looking to play with it up here. Um, down here at 75, it's got decent support. I'll take a stab at it long there, and then again at 62. Um, let's see, CVX. So CVX here, same chart, right? Negative MACD, it's really struggling uh, right here. Look where it keeps getting rejected, right? I actually sold put spreads on this in August at 125 right here, right? This is support at 122.26. So I sold a put spread at 125, and uh, I'll be looking to take it long there. It, look, these are good companies. I, I just the oil bulls think oil can't ever go down again, and it just it's been weak recently since it broke down. So 
I, I'm not a big fan of this at the moment. Uh, with JP Morgan, right, this had pretty terrible earnings last week. I, I made a video on it. Uh, home mortgages down 26%, so many things. Look, look at these candles the last two weeks. The, these are not strong candles. Like these are, went down, it went up. I mean, they, they still can't even reclaim the 10. So yes, I know it bounced off the lows of like 106, uh, which it hit the lows that I mentioned like perfectly. It hit 106 like perfectly and it bounced, but these are two terrible candles back to back. And actually the last, look at these, the last six of these, it, it just, it can't get over the 10. This is a really weak and broken name. Um, it's a very cheap name. Yeah, you wanna sell puts lower, go ahead. But it, 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 there's no strength in the name right now at all. And so if you saw any strength, we, we'd be somewhat closer to these, but we're not. So um, now let's look at some indexes. So the SPY ended the week at 395. Um, We've had quite the rally, right? We got as low as 362. So the SPY is up basically 10% in six weeks. And it's been an impressive move. It's been an impressive move uh, in the last six weeks. And um, will it continue? Personally, my honest opinion, I, I don't think so. You know, every time we have big tech earnings, which is this week, after that, we kind of run out of catalyst for the market, right? We have rate hikes this Wednesday, and then after that, we're, we're just kind of going to have no buying catalyst. You know, every time we have earnings, usually there's a run-up into earnings, okay? And now we've had our run-up. Now all these tech names are going to report. They're all going to warn. I mean, last week, IBM warned, Netflix warned, Tesla warned, all about the dollar. Every, every company is warning. Uh, Snapchat warned about advertising. And so there's just so much uncertainty going forward. I can't say just buy all this stuff and wait. Um, you know, the market hates uncertainty more than anything else. So um, I think after this week, I think the next two, three weeks, whatever, I, I think by, let's say, September 1, I think the market's retested these lows. So, um, you know, I'm going to have a way to play it for everyone and all that. That's fine. Uh, but, you know, I've said for the last, like, three, four weeks, I sold almost no call spreads in my sub stack just because... I didn't feel there was anything to be bearish about because they always run us into this kind of stuff. So we did that and now I'm flipping to more neutral. Okay, maybe not completely bearish, but I do think we're gonna be neutral or down and I'll be selling call spreads higher the next couple weeks. I, I don't think we're just gonna continue levitating higher like we have for the last couple. So next, let's look at the cues. So with the cues, okay, uh, I continue to favor put spreads back here at the 200, 273. Look, we're at 302 now. I mean, th this has been a crazy, crazy run. I mean, this is up over 10%. And so, um, you know, big tech could could ruin this whole thing. Now, if big tech surprises and every name reports good numbers, sure, anything could happen, all right? But um, I, I'm not expecting that. So I, I'm not gonna make a play on that this week. And like I said, we'll wait and see what big tech does. The IWM is the small caps, you know, the Kathy Wood names. Look at that. This reclaimed a big level. Um, you know, I, I still, I mean, these names are still, most of them are unprofitable. I mean, look at Snapchat yesterday. The market is killing these kind of names. And so um, I, I just, like I said, I want to see good guidance from some of these companies. There's so many coming this week. And, and that's what I'm saying. I'm working on my on my um, recap tomorrow for my Substack for the week preview. But I, you know, with no profits, with a higher risk-free rate, I, I don't know. I just don't see it. I don't see it. Like, you know, right now we're just conditioned to buy the dip all the time, but I just don't see it going forward. The risk-free rate, you know, uh, a lot of money is going to come out of the market with older people and it's going to go into that risk-free rate. So, um, we'll, we'll see what happens. We, we will see what happens, but I, I'm not really buying this move up as a real one. You know, even you look at ARC, right? Everyone's like, oh, ARC had such a monster move. Look at this thing. ARC's monster move was because it was so oversold down here at 35. It barely got up over the 10. Finally, finally. It took it took the MACD being positive for five weeks for it to get over that. So I, I don't know. I just, 
I'm not as bullish as everyone. Like, everyone's just blindly bullish on everything. There's just so much going on in the world. Uh, you know, money is a zero-sum game, okay? If it's not spent somewhere, it's spent somewhere else, right? So people have money. They're just, they're spending it on fuel. They're spending it on higher medical bills. They're spending it on a myriad of things that they have to pay for first before they spend it on useless junk in the economy. So that's what concerns me is, yeah, right now people are living on their credit cards worth the highest credit card debt like ever. And yeah, people are spending because they're, they're just, they don't want to face the reality of what's coming in that they don't make enough to uh, continue the lifestyle they had and live in this new economy. So yeah, it takes time for these numbers to correlate, right? They, it takes numbers. Like if we already look at the housing numbers coming out, I mean, mortgages are down every week. Nobody, Nobody's buying at these new 6 7% mortgages. So um, going forward, I mean, this is going to be a slow bleed, if, if you want my opinion. I think it's going to be uh, just a slow and painful realization that we're not going back to that booming economy that we always had. And, you know, it, it's sad, but it's just the reality. When, when you want to accept it is, is up to you. But if we look at, let's say, the XLY. You know, this is, this has Tesla and Amazon. This obviously rallied because of Tesla. Now we have Amazon this week. Look how far away from the moving averages it's gotten, right? So uh, this isn't one I would play until it got back to, down here. So if you want to sell puts 145-ish on this thing, go ahead. You, you never want to buy names when they're fully broken out like this, right? You're just asking to get bagged because names tend to gravitate towards all these moving averages. Um, so you want to see a slow, steady move up. You don't want to see this like rapid, rapid move. Like this went, look at this, from 139 to 154 in a week, right? You, you don't want to see moves like that, especially in an index. Uh, next, we have the XRT, which is the retail ETF. Um, you know, I, I'm not buying this move up here in this one, right? This is another one that had a really, really powerful 10% move in five, six days. We, we've seen the retailers. We've seen, you know, they're overloaded with inventory, Walmart, Target, whatever. Uh, Prime just had its best Prime day ever. But it was more, people were just like liquidating inventory. It wasn't, you know, we had our best day ever. It was like there was unbelievable deals because people were trying to just dump inventory. So we'll see what comes up with these retail numbers. But last quarter, the inventory numbers killed everyone. So I, I'm expecting more of the same this quarter. And... Um, I just, I don't see consumers just spending on this nonsense. Like, we, we're a consumer economy, okay? This whole country is built on people going out and wasting their money on junk. And right now, like I said, with, with fuel and food and all the important stuff costing more, people just aren't buying junk. Um, I have a lot of friends who are uh, CEOs of, you know, manufacturing things. I mean, that's, you know, a lot of what I do is I invest in a lot of these smaller products and they're just seeing sales fall off a cliff they're seeing sales literally fall off a cliff for widgets and so um it's not that they have bad products it's just that in the pecking order of what's important in life people are not buying their products so uh just my two cents on the matter we'll see what happens we have here the xlf and this one i've been telling you for a while i'm, I'm targeting this gap over here at 25 I'm still targeting this gap. Yes, it's had a little rally the last two weeks. We got as low as 30.42, but I still think we're gonna come down and fill this gap here at 25.30. So um, banks, I still don't like them. They're so weak and broken for for all the rate hikes we're getting. And it's, it's more of the market telling you that the recession worries them more than the rate hikes benefit banks. So um, with that, let's look at MSTR. And then finally, we'll look at oil. But Bitcoin, you know, whatever, it's had a nice rally. Look at it, 281. I mean, this thing was 140 a month ago. I mean, I, I, I don't know how I feel about Bitcoin. It, there's just too many fanboys on one side and there's too many negative bears on the other side. I, I think Bitcoin is a cool asset. I, I, I don't think anything else of it. Should it have been 60,000? Probably not. Should it still be 20 some odd thousand? 
I don't know. You know, so many of these things are lost forever. I, I know I threw away a laptop in like 2013 with five of them. So, you know, I think a ton of them are lost forever. And I think more uh, people want to buy it than Bitcoins exist. And so I think for a long time you're going to have, you know, just buying pressure on this thing. But it, it's just not something I would touch. Uh, lastly, let's look at oil. Um, let's pull this up here. So, oil has been broken since I noted this uptrend broke, right? And when it broke this uptrend, it, it's never even sniffed it again, okay? Uh, right now we're at $95 on September futures. Um, this is the next level right here, 88. Look, look where it stopped two weeks ago. Look where it stopped perfectly, right? It hit this huge support level, and then we had a bounce, and now we're rolling over again. Um, I, I Like I said, I have oil goes to 40, 50 bucks. I, I really could care less. I, I, I know uh, someone was telling me the other day that if oil goes too low, it's going to cause demand to spike and there's not enough oil, whatever. That, that, that's all nonsense. We, we've been at 40, 50 dollar oil for the bulk of the Trump presidency, 40, 50, 60 dollars. Um, it, it, it's silly. That's oil is, we, we have literally unlimited oil on this earth. And that's the silliest part about all this is, um, in the past we've had like peak oil discussion or whatever. There is unlimited oil. It's a matter of our politicians are pushing this fake ESG movement, electric cars, all that stuff. They are making drilling difficult. Um, we need to drill and we need to drill as much as possible because, for our country to go back to that booming economy, it's, it's, it's a very simple formula. People can't be wasting all their money filling their car with gas. That is the dumbest thing imaginable. And you're not saving the earth by doing it, okay? The earth has been heating and cooling for millions and millions of years, long before Standard Oil drilled their first well, okay? Um, Electric cars are no better for the environment than oil. Like anyone who says that is just talking crazy. I mean, look look how much of the earth you have to dig up to make one battery. You're, you're not saving the world by driving an electric car. Now, do I think electric cars are cool for transportation? Yeah, absolutely. They have significantly less moving parts. They're easier to maintain. Uh, they're nice. Like if you're rich and you can spend eight, 900 bucks on a car payment, get yourself an EV for transportation. They're neat little machines. Uh, I own a Tesla Model 3 Performance. Um, I think it's pretty crappy interior-wise for the money, but you know, for transportation and driving around, and you know, I was I was wasting a hundred bucks every like three days on uh, fuel for my car. Yeah, it's really nice. You know, you get to work, you come home. I have a free charger at my condo, so I, I paid zero dollars to charge the thing, and you know, I plug it in when I get home. I wake up in the morning, it's full. Great. Really cool transportation, right? Like I'm probably saving 12, 1500 bucks a month in fuel. Yeah, that's that's awesome, right? That, that, that's tremendous. But I don't think I'm saving the world by driving one. And so uh, we need to see oil prices decline further, even 75, 70 bucks, anything from up here. And every dollar oil goes down is, is just a boon to the economy. It's just a boon to the economy. So going forward, uh, let's see how this week plays out. Uh, like I said, with big caps, I'm looking at Apple and Google as the most bearish, I would say, just chart-wise. Uh, I think Amazon and Microsoft are going to be neutral, so to speak, and I think Meta is the best position just with all that negative sentiment from Snap and possibly Google before it. So uh, that's how I see this week. But Overall, I'd say be really cautious this week. The market's going to have some crazy moves. You have the Fed right in the middle of the week with their interest rate decision. You know, what if they go at one, you know, a full point? So there's just so much this week. I, I would say for most of you, I think you're best off sitting on the sidelines for a week. Um, I'm obviously going to have my plan to attack it tomorrow, like I said, on my sub stack. But just my honest opinion, there's going to be some chaotic moves this week. And unless you're a trader and looking to make money, just sit on the side and wait for the market to give you some direction. That's that's just truly how I believe because we'll, we'll have a better grasp of where we're going Friday um, after all these names report. So uh, that's my take. I, I hope you guys enjoyed this video and um, I hope you all have a great weekend.